Hello everybody, Flick here, time for yet another Lex to look at, and today we're looking at Bionic Jews, and in the background you will be hearing the title music that you can hear in full if you want in the trailer via their official website which is in the description box below along with all relevant other links. I, it's a very anime type song, I, I'm talking over it because I don't want to accidentally, accidentally get like a, a copyright strike or whatever, I don't think they would because you know, it's music they've created themselves. Music and sound by Pablo Vega, there you go. So, Bionic Jews. I'm going to have to jump into my game because I don't want too much of the song to play. It is very good though. So I'm going to load my current in-game progress and we're going to talk a little bit about what this game is about. First of all, if you were luckily, lucky enough to be at PAX Prime last month or just over a month ago, you might have seen this or a slightly earlier version of it. They let me know that it was very well received. This is a slightly updated alpha build, so you know, keep that in mind. It's an alpha, etc. The basic premise. It's a bit like FTL in some respects in terms of core gameplay elements, not in the, the manner in which the game is played, more like overall goals. You are an exosuit pilot and you have a few to choose from. I've chosen Genji. Um, and you have the sole surviving four suit echo suits after the rest are destroyed by a robot uprising. You are given 50 days until the final confrontation and as time passes, the final confrontation, which you can see on the right here, they build in numbers and strength, and there's like there's named boss ones that are especially difficult. So you have a you can do an action a day. Uh, so for example, if you let your base get damaged, a day's worth of repair has to be done. Same if you fail a mission, a day's worth of repair has to be done in your exosuits. If you succeed in the mission, a day passes. So there's a balance of improving your exosuits, but also like debuffing the enemies, trying to reduce their numbers, reduce their strength by taking ammo factories, etc, etc. There's also a heavy customization, customization sorry, system. Now I took the pre-selected exosuit party of four because it suggested that it was a good bit, mix of the various um, classes that you can go as. You can however just make your own if you're familiar enough with the game. I wasn't so I took the pre-built. So We'll have a little look here. I've left the tutorial messages on. You can press OK, don't tell me again, but I've tried not to do that for most of them just so it can remind me of things to explain. The interface can be a little daunting when you get started. I, I still find it a little daunting. However, over time, I can imagine it becoming second nature. So you get loot from winning missions, from hacking locked doors, from finding items in stages, etc, etc. And these can be used to customise your exosuits uh, and change up your playstyle. Getting to the final battle is only half the challenge. You will need creativity and design to get there. So I'm not 100% sure I'm using like any kind of ideal build. In fact, I think I have some leftover equipment. Your exosuits have a set power limit and you can't exceed it without hindering its performance. So you have to kind of balance out because each thing you put in usually has, a, for example, this one consumes 44 power. Uh, and my current power usage is 224 out of 300. So I've got a little bit of space to toy around with this guy. I could have probably put something else in, in fact. Do I have anything I can put in? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I could maybe buff up his gun a little bit. I'm just trying to... that would increase his attack power, splash damage radius, attack boost and it would still leave me with 46 power to play with. Why not? I don't have room on any of the other exosuits. So the epic assault suit is kind of like your jack of all trades. He's a little good at defending, he's a little good at fighting both single target and groups. Then I have the siege unit which is kind of big on shields. He has tons of stupidly powerful guns, like ridiculously powerful. However, they all have crap ammunition apart from his his basic like machine gun, which is pretty weak. I mean, it does, what, 170 damage? Whereas you look at, like, say, the rocket launcher, which is 1260, the plasma cannon, which is 2520, so you get the idea. And then we have the a bit of a unique one here. We have the epic ninja exosuit, which relies on a stealth system. You can activate stealth, and then the enemies can't see you. And I also picked up a component that lets him spread a virus to enemies he gets next to and turns them to my side for for the duration of the mission which is very interesting so he's weak on shields he doesn't have amazing guns he has one well actually two of his guns are okay it's just they're really like close-up wep uh, weapons and he's not a close-up fighter per se and then last but not least we have epic science exosuit he is all about hacking consoles that you might randomly find on the i assume they're randomly generated content missions i mean there's the there are different criteria, like for example, a warehouse will always be a warehouse, however, the placement of things within it will most likely be randomly generated. So yeah, the science guy, he's got an okay gun, the chain gun is pretty good, his pistol is atrocious, I've not even bothered upgrading it, it's not worth it. Laser rifle again, that's pretty okay. His main thing, however, is hacking, and we'll hopefully get to see that in, um, in action now as I jump back to my city map and pick a mission. So the green dot, my base, 
The yellow coloured ones are missions I have access to. Orange ones are locked out because I haven't cleared the path to them. And the ticks are missions I've already done. So this is my only save file thus far. I've played enough of the game to get the gist of understanding. The missions have actually started getting tougher, so excuse me if I do do really badly and suddenly fail. So I've got access to a parts fab. Fabrication facility, I assume it means. The bots capture this parts... Oh yeah, fabricator plan, yeah. Which produces internal upgrades that work for our exos. If we capture it back, we'll get twice as many parts as usual from completing the mission. Now that is tempting. The only other thing at this side is a blockade which serves no purpose because I can get over to this lion's den, very difficult mission if I wanted. However, it suggests not to attempt this until there's 30 or 40 days remaining because this is where you can assassinate one of the final wave's boss guys. We'll try the we'll try the fab lab, I think, and then we might fit in one more mission from this kind of selection over this end. Yeah, let's try fab lab. So this is another hot tip I've left up. A turn. You, it's all turn based, assuming an enemy sees you a la, say, Dungeons of Dreadmore. Uh, an action, you get one action per turn and that includes taking a step, shooting an, a gun, using an ability or switching which suit is your active suit. After you take a turn, enemies will also do that. Uh, it suggests to go slow, I totally agree with that, you have to be very careful. Um, switch. You can switch between your exos just by pressing there, yep. Oh actually there's also hotkeys, although I'm used to pressing the buttons now so I'm going to stick with that if you don't mind. And then it talks a little bit about special abilities, mouse over objectives, okay, I am familiar with all that. The finishing touch to any mission is to find the warp pad and get your exos out of there. So as we start, you can zoom in pretty far to see a little bit of detail. Generally all the stages kind of look like this kind of very mechanical layout. I might, if I wanted to levy any kind of complaint, it would be a bit more diversity in the tile sets being used. Not just the random placement of, say, where cover is in the stages. I can also zoom out ridiculously far if you want a kind of Space Hulk-esque tactical view. So I can see that up here there is a level 4 Thunderbot. He's a sniper. Hmm. And that's a nice big open hallway right there. That's annoying. There's cover, but only at his end. And then there's... Okay. Uh, oh, oh, perfect. That opportunity to play with stealth. I'm going to stealth. That means I have 19 turns of stealth in total. If I use it all up, that's it for the mission. Unless I find a recharge station. So I'm going to use as much of this as possible to get up there next to the sniper. And then I'm going to... Oh, there's more behind him. There's a Tesla bot right behind him. And then a Silence bot. I guess that's going to mean I can't use abilities if he catches me. So what I'm going to do with my nine turns of stealth left is... Do another one, do another one. And I'm going to use Virus. That has turned the sniper on my side. And then I'm going to pick my welding laser. I'm holding Shift to see where I, if I use an ability where it's going to hit. I don't want to hit the bot I just took control of. I'm going to burn there. <laughs> Unfortunately, my sniper bot is dying. Uh, if I switch to, say, a light machine gun to help finish this guy off. Hmm, he's got shields. Let's do it. Oh, boom, there goes sniper bot. I still have three turns where the enemy can't see me, however, so that means I'm safe temporarily. Burn him. Now, you will hear a lot of the robots saying sometimes it's serious stuff, sometimes it's quite funny stuff. I like it. The voices sound a lot like how Terminator sound in any kind of Warhammer 40k game. So I, I mentioned Space Hulk earlier. It sounds like the Terminators in Space Hulk, the, the newly released kind of traditional board game mess. I did a video on it. They also say, like, one of them says, Why was I programmed to feel pain? I can't remember if that's from Futurama or Simpsons, but I love that reference. Uh, so I've got two turns of stealth left. That is not going to give me enough movement to get up to this silence bot. So I'm going to just try and weld him from this distance. Ah, no, it only welds vertical, not kind of horizontal. I'm going to use a turn. Well, hang on, I can use one, two. I'm going to use two of my movement to get in here. And that means he can't see me. And I'm going to change to... Ah, it's a waste using the Siege XO on one guy. Change back to my Assault. He actually has 11 turns. I never use Stealth for anything other than the Ninja because he has so much. I'll use his Stealth. I might as well. Switch to my laser and kill him. Ah, that's the difference though. If you use, if you fire a weapon when you're stealth with anything other than the stealth suit, you lose stealth. So there we go, fair enough. Oh, enemy up there. I will just laser him from this distance. No, I will not because he's out of range. Um, I could plasma rifle him. What's the range in that? Oh, that's a massive. Let me just move the camera up here a little bit. Plasma rifling him would be an absolute waste. Can I reach him with this? Oh yeah, this weapon has a really weird uh, firing arc for some reason. I would hit myself if I did that. I'm just going to press spacebar to skip a turn and let him come a bit closer. There we go. He is shutting down. Now, to my right is a locked door with a ridiculous num amount of health. That's because it wants you to switch to science. And there we go. 
The door is effectively immune to your weaponry and can only be opened if you disable the security measure by hacking. Your exo currently has 22 hacking points remaining and this door will cost 3 They usually cost 1 or 2. Are you sure you want to do this? It better be worth it. What do we have in here? Ammo chest. Now that's interesting. I I think that's... Hmm. If you use an ammo chest, it uses it up for the exo you use it with. It doesn't carry over to every exo, I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my siege. I'm going to go absolutely nuts with his ridiculously powerful weaponry. And then I'm going to come back and stock him up. So there's a Thunderbolt and a few more. Oh, the only, by the way, the only reason I can kind of see what's around the corner without getting there is because I've been upgrading their sensor range with some of the equipment I've been putting on them. I find that remarkably helpful. I've got seven turns of stealth I could use. Uh, there's a glass door. Exo robot suits don't stop for glass. Oh, they know I'm here. Hmm, do I want to wait or do I want to fire? I'll, I'll take a hit if I do that. Yeah, let's have some fun. Oh, did they just kill my seat? They killed my siege exo. God damn. I was not expecting all of them to be able to fire at that range. Okay, that's not good. I'm going to crack out the plasma gun then. And... Yeah, who's laughing now, Zorak? Oh, it was a sniper bot at the end of a dam. Okay, I'm going to need to move here. I'm going to cloak. Move a little bit closer. And I'm going to plasma them as well. Oh, I didn't kill him. Damn it. No. Now, I've never had a stage before that's always been like so many tight corridors. That's what's proving a problem here, because if it was big open rooms, I'd be using another fun tactic I found. I have two exosuits capable of deploying sentry turrets, thanks to things I've equipped on them. And I love setting up like little death rooms, and then you can use an ability that every suit has called Whistle, down here. And it makes every nearby robot aware of your presence, and they'll come and get you. So what am I going to do here? There's a silent bot there, and then there's that bloody sniper at the end of the hall. I'm going to have to get close to him. He's going to get closer to me first, though. Oh, so I'm using the wrong ability also. That won't reach him. Damn it. I'm going to wait turn. There we go. And then... And then I'm going to go back and charge up my ammo for the assault XO because I stupidly wasted my siege one doing something very stupid. I should have whistled, backed off, and laid a trap. That's what the game was talking about. It talks about you lure the enemies to you, you set traps, you don't like rush in blindly or crap like that happens and screws you over a little bit. I will get the suit back, even if I failed the mission, I would lose all suits and fail the mission, say you just waste a day getting them back and obviously the mission is still there to retry. So there's a false wall there I can shoot. I'll use my light machine gun because that's weak. And then I'll move the camera up a bit. Got a big door up there. Got a couple of Tesla bots. Hmm, with gamma gamma ray lasers. Okay. I'm gonna to switch to grenade launcher and move up a little bit. And start causing a mess. I'm sorry if it burns, but you're a bastard and deserve to be blown up. Why was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> There's a quote I like. I hope they add a few more like optional quotes that they can say because sometimes you might hear one a bit too often. I don't think I'd ever get tired of hearing the why was I programmed to feel pain quote, but other people might. So this door also costs three points to hack. That is a pain. What's in here? Shield recharge. How much shield do I have on people? I think shield is just health, if I'm right. So that means it's fine. I've got a bit that can heal a guy if I decide to come back here. We will push on, however. And those red dots up ahead are a cluster of... Oh, damn it, there's a sniper. Oh, he ran out of ammo. <laughs> Sometimes enemies will just accidentally shoot wildly and miss you by miles also. It's, it's quite funny. Also, I said also too many times there. And again, damn OCD. So, what have we got down here? We have another one of those silence bots. Quietly redirects all incoming damage to a nearby allied bot. Worse, the redirected damage is only 75% strong. I really should have read what it did prior. And what's behind it? A Thunderbot sniper. Yeah, this is filled with snipers, damn it. Uh, I don't have any kind of like big hard hitting weapons. Well, grenades aren't bad. Oh wait, no, I re I forgot I restocked. Okay, we're going to stealth. We're going to turn down there so I can get a better camera angle. And then we're going to burn the heretics. Sorry, I'm in Space Hulk mode. Oh, okay, for some reason that doesn't do anything to... Oh, because he redirects the damage, so he's essentially immune until he's the only one left. I get it. Once again, I wasn't thinking that through. This is a game that pays off stopping and thinking. So down here, two more Thunderbots, because this stage is obsessed with snipers. There's also a door up here, however, so I'm going to go open this door. Oh, I walked into a horrible corridor. Son of a... Okay, plasma. 
I took out most of them. Am I in range? I am. Fantastic. He is not in range. I'm going to let him come to me. <laughs> that kind of... Ah, he just did there. I swear it sounds like Seth MacFarlane doing his Stan being hurt noise from American Dad. There's a bit of cover blocking me from that sniper, in fact, so I can walk right... Oh, no, I can't because it's a trap. So I triggered the cover getting destroyed. Ah, he's miles away. One more movement. I'll take the hit. He can't seem to get through my shield. He's only doing like 17 damage. That's fine. I need to find my damn objective. Let me just scroll out here to try and... I worry that it's all the way down there and I'm like going on a wild goose chase by going all the way up here. A locked door. Fine. I can open that. Three more points, I assume. Yep. What do we have here? That was just a, a large loot container. So I got a Mark IV power amplifier of propulsion. I am finding as I go on that management of available power for the exosuits is becoming my biggest detriment because I haven't raided enough places for equipment which increase your maximum power. Uh, I'm going to shoot this door from range. I'll scroll it a little bit so I can get a better view. Okay, we've got a big corridor. Again, really thin corridor though. Filled with cover and filled with damn Tesla bots and Thunderbots. Hmm. If I keep on using these grenades, I'm going to run out real fast. What I could... Ah, but this is a too wide corridor. That's good. Okay, I'm going to come out here. Turn to face this way. And I'm going to deploy a sentry. Please help me, sentry bot Kenobi. You can only hope. Cover my back while I'm searching up here. I wonder if I can kind of trigger those grenades. I can indeed. I just want to have a look up this corridor to see if this... Uh, can't quite see it's because of a damn door in fact. Shoot the door. It leads to another door. Ah, which leads into another room but again I don't know where my objective is. I was going to show more than one mission in the duration of this video however I was not expecting this mission to take me so long. Up till now the any individual mission win or lose has say although I haven't actually lost a stage yet. I came very close once and then I decided oh I'm just going to load my save file. Which is probably cheating. I probably shouldn't have admitted that. Anyway, each stage usually doesn't take more than 15 minutes, and this is what, we're at 17 minutes-ish now, and this is including my kind of preamble at the start. I have one plasma rifle shot left. I could cause some real fun with this if I go down one more. Nope. I can't get line of sight, damn it. If I, don't know if I do that, I'm going to hurt myself. Oh, okay. Suck on that. I was kind of hoping another element to the game would be present on this stage where there's like rune, I can't remember if it calls it runes, but there's markings on the floor which if you explode something near them have the same effect so you can kind of set up traps that way as well. I want to deploy another turret. Turrets seem to also attract more hate, enmity, than you do. So they're really good for taking the, the heat off you. I have tons of the damn things as well so I might as well use them up. That is a door my science guy can open. That is a door my science guy can open. This is a dead end, I believe. Yep, okay, so I'm kind of... I'm cutting off this part of the map. I'm still going to have to go over there and check. And this is going to be a horrible corridor, isn't it? Oh, that's a tough one! He just one-shotted me! Thunderbot. Sniper. I don't know why he did so much damage. Unless he hit the thing behind me and exploded, but... Whatever the hell he did, he just annihilated me. How am I going to deal with this? By machine gunning him to death. Uh, I don't have any stealth left. This is bad. I might actually fail him. The first ever fail will be on camera. That'd be horrible. Uh oh. Run away, science bot. Run away, science bot. Put one of your sentries there. Shoot them. Shoot them, sentry bot. Shoot them. I'll put down another one. Defend me. I'll just keep on pressing space a bunch of times. Now the only problem is I've kind of accidentally cut myself off there. And my destination might be there. I'm going to have to destroy this damn thing in front of me. Is it going to give me a warning that I'm shooting a friendly? Nope. Can I not just remove it? Hmm. No. It appears not. I'm going to change back to my stealth guy. Ah, that's a little annoying. I could have sworn I could attack this before and it just gave me a warning like, Are you aware you're about to hit your teammate? Ah, there we go. That did. I just used an AoE cheat. Oh, that's right, I could have just targeted the, the ground instead of worrying about pressing on him. Oh, might as well switch back to my science guy to open this. I'm running out of hacking points. Stealth generator bay, fantastic. Get my stealth back. 
Here we go, I've got 19 turns of stealth. That could be invaluable to being able to do this. So I'm going to stealth, and I'm going to shoot the door. There's a silence bot in there, but nothing of value. I'm going to turn stealth off and walk away. In fact, I'm going to deploy a mine and then walk away in case I get followed. Mines come from something I've equipped the suit with, too. Oh, I've been talking to a lot so long I had to take a drink there. So I think we're going up here next. Yes, we are. Hmm. And I will use his weak light machine gun to get rid of these mines. And I will stealth. And I want him to be my friend. Oh, I don't have enough virus points left over. How much does he need? Will it tell me? Yeah, I needed nine. I have seven. Hmm. Kinetic burst. There we go. If I can get next to someone to use that, it does a crap ton of damage. Ah, there's my destination. I just need to get to that. And I win. That is easier said than done. However, switch to science ball. Stealth up. Move right. Face upwards. Put down your last sentry. Go back to stealth bot. Um, stealth up. Machine gun. I kind of accidentally caused that chain explosion. I'm not entirely sure how I did it. Nevertheless, I need to get closer. Ooh, nasty. He's got AoE. Okay, the sentry gun is almost dead. In fact, I think I'm I'm going to have to leave the stage because I've only got the two kind of defensive bots left. I don't have any of my good high heavy hitters, so I'm going to walk out. Great work. Get a little bit of voice acting here. Your exos took a beating. Don't worry, engineers will take. So although I back. lost two of my suits, I think I just have them back now. And then one day has passed, so that tells me about manufacturing things for the final battle. That's them shoring up their numbers. It also tells me what loot I've had. And I think I can just pull it down here to see everything. Yep, so the levels of the things that are coming in the final wave are steadily increasing. So now if I go back to my customization, I can go to my inventory, and there's a bunch more stuff here. However, because I'm running out of power, available power on my exosuits, it causes a lot of issues where you're having to kind of balance out, is this better than this? Do I want to be able to, to deploy turrets, or do I want to be able to deploy mines? Do I need either of those things? That looks like it adds a crap ton of stuff, however, it also requires 40 power, which is pretty sizable for something that... Well, actually, it can fit in multiple slots. It can go in weapons, propulsion, shields, or computers, or reactors. Hmm. Anyway, that's going to kind of wrap up my look at Bionic Jews. I'm going to go to save game. I'm going to overwrite my save because I'm happy that I was able to do the stage. And I'll go back to the main title to let you hear a bit more of the... I can't remember the name of the track, unfortunately, but you'll hear a little bit of it. So as I was saying, there will be relevant links in the description below. The game is slated for kind of an alpha pre-release Steam deal starting on October 8th, so look out for it then. I don't believe this current build is available to anyone other than press, although I may be wrong. You can check out their website which will be linked below and find out more. So now I'll shut up, let you hear a little bit of this background music of this track which I think is pretty decent, and just say thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more content. Ta-ta for now.